Hey everybody, this is Christy Ferio from Keys to the Shop. Welcome to this edition of Shift Break. Uh, today we are actually uh, welcoming our second guest onto the show. You know, we heard from uh, Joe Morocco about career advice uh, previously, which was a great episode. Now today we get to hear from Tim Jones uh, about going from being a barista to a founder of a cafe and uh, kind of the main things that have been helpful for him in making that transition. I know that we all have somewhat of a, uh, a dream to open our own cafe, and Tim is literally living the dream. So Tim Jones is, uh, first and foremost, he's a husband and father. But his coffee career has spanned uh, the last 10 years and has included work in basically every level of the cafe, from uh, dishwasher to manager and in 2015, Tim and his wife, Talisa, launched Liturgy Beverage Company as a full-service specialty coffee catering business in Durham, North Carolina. And they will be expanding that business into a retail space come February in 2019. Tim, I'm really glad to have you on the show. Welcome to Keys to the Shop. Yeah, thanks for having me, Chris. I'm excited to be here. I've been a long-time listener. Well, I appreciate that. Um, well, you've got a coffee shop coming. <laughs> it's a yeah. a big thing. So um, tell us a little bit about Liturgy Beverage Company and um, how this opportunity uh, came about to go from catering to a actual space. Yeah, so I've been in the industry for a long time, and we... Um, kind of knew my wife and I knew for the last few years we wanted to do our own thing and we saw a need in our community for catering so we've done a lot of corporate events wedding receptions stuff like that um just because there was a need in our community we saw it and we went for it and then about two years ago um the owners of the Durham Food Hall which is the like larger venue that we'll be in uh reached out to me and said hey we'd love to talk about this and so for us, it was a really kind of great opportunity because the cost to getting in is really low. Um, and because I'm a working barista and have been for a while now, I don't have, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars saved up to do this. What? So, <laughs> I know, right? And so, yeah, the, the cost of getting in there was relatively low. Um, and so we kind of thought a lot about it and decided to go for it. So it's been a process permitting and locations and all the like construction details, but we're in the home stretch now. We're hoping to be open sometime beginning of February. So Right, and you've got that Kickstarter happening. Uh now I think it's it's going until this Friday. Yeah, it'll end uh Friday night at midnight. Excellent. We'll link to that in the show notes for sure. Um you know, where to start in terms of how uh, one would go about becoming a company from being a barista to having your own entity uh, as a business. Um, you have five basically key areas that you think contributed to being able to make this transition. And uh, I want to talk about those five things here today. Um, and, and we start with the product, the coffee um, you, you say you need to learn how to be a great barista and be a great employee. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, man. I think when I first started in coffee, I didn't drink coffee. I, it was a college job. Um, I literally used it for the effects of the caffeine. Um, and as I like learned about the product and learned about the industry, um, learned how to run a bar, how to make great drinks and all that kind of stuff, that was like foundational for me in terms of deciding to open a business because being a great barista and then also being like able to work in a company like as part of a team um, has been really foundational for everything after that. Yeah, so your knowledge of coffee, your relationship to coffee and your relationship to the people that were essentially your bosses and mm -hmm. your – uh, ability to lead as a boss in the future, it depends, I guess, on your ability to being able to take direction in, in management and kind of earn that uh, that wisdom over time, right? Yeah, I think that that's a huge part of it. I think a lot of the people, I, a lot of the like leadership people I read and all the bosses and mentors I've had have always talked about 
Like you have to be able to understand every level of your business. And so starting um, as a barista, and actually I started as a dishwasher, um, helps like really get you a foundational level of every aspect of the business. So learning about um, the business and learning about coffee in particular is some, you know, it can be pretty, um, I don't want to say easy because it takes a lot of um, skill and it takes a lot of patience and application, but learning how to uh, work with people, and, and that's the second thing you, you say is really critical to this transition, um, learning how to lead and manage uh, and, and serve people and your community is, is one of those things that helps you in this process. Talk to us about the, the process of learning how to lead and manage and serve people. For me, my transition into coffee as a career happened when I left my first coffee job and got recruited by one of the larger chains to be a manager and like was just kind of thrown into a, a role of having a lot of authority over people and suddenly being in a position where I had no idea how to effectively lead. Um, and I think that, that that idea of like serving people um, – both in terms of leading and like managing and employees, but also then reaching out into the community. Those people skills um, are really foundational for, at least for my story, because if I hadn't been able to like learn over several years how to like lead, serve, and like really relate to people and build those people skills, um, I don't think we would be where we are today. I think one part of it too for, for us was like we would not have had the trajectory we did if I didn't have, you know, friends and customers in the different cafes I worked at over the years tell me like, hey, you know, we'd really love to have coffee at this event or my daughter's getting married. We'd love to have a coffee bar at our wedding reception. Really being able to listen and find out what like people need, both as guests and as like employees um is something that i think is really important you go on to list um money and learning how to manage the product so first you're talking about learning the truths and the skills about the product and now we're talking about money and handling the uh, inventory and things like that why is that a critical part of um, being successful in transitioning to being an owner of a business well, I think it's really easy for baristas, uh, and it was my, this is my case, my story was to dream about opening a coffee shop and dream about, you know, making great espresso and having regular customers and stuff, some, something like that and miss that, like, the foundation of a coffee shop is, like, cash flow and that there's a, a profit and loss statement that, like, if you're not making more money than you're spending, you're not going to stay in business. And so that was one of the biggest things for me. I worked um, a company here in the area um, for five years. And while I was there, I like learned a lot and saw kind of firsthand how, you know, ordering not enough or too much inventory, how that affects your sales and learning like how to read a profit and loss statement and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and that really was where for me it, it changed from, Oh, this is a dream to, Oh, I could, this could be a business that I could do was being able to see that. Because that part of it is sort of nagging in the back of your mind. Like, Hey, you know, that's a dream, but you don't know these things. And, and until you buckle down and actually get into the somewhat quote unquote boring numbers, it, it might just remain a dream or a nightmare if you actually start one and don't understand those things. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think the biggest thing I would say about the whole process for me has been keeping a posture of learning of having a, a willingness to kind of look at what I know and realize like that there are a lot of things I don't know um, and trying to then figure out what I don't know. Mm -hmm. One of the most daunting parts of, of this whole, you know, journey of, you know, journey into the things you don't know is the business plan. 
and that part <laughs> really uh, throws people sometimes, and that's critical. So, yeah, how learning how to structure a business plan and project results. Well, what do you mean by first of all projecting results, and how was that journey for you in creating your business plan for liturgy? It was really hard. I'm just being honest. Like when when I started like the process of coming up with a business plan and all that, there weren't a ton of resources. Um, especially not specifically for specialty coffee. Um, I went to the small business administration. Um, it's a government agency. They have a lot of resources for small businesses. I basically downloaded like their, you know, packet of information and I read through it like 20 times. Nice. And, and honestly, that's where I started because there, there wasn't, I didn't have anybody telling me like, okay, this is how you write a business plan. And so I basically laid out everything kind of because they walk you through everything and then honestly I just basically walked through it and doing that helped me understand kind of the whole scope of the business um, which leads to when I, when I said when I told you project or project results like in order to have a business you have to be able to model even in just really basic terms like if I sell a latte for $2, am I going to be profitable? Well, it depends on how much your coffee costs and how much your milk costs hmm. and things like that. And being able to kind of look at, okay, so if I do 10,000 cups of coffee this year, I'm going to make this much money. Is that enough money to pay somebody to serve 10,000 cups of coffee and pay for the cups and the coffee? Right. And, the and so tax and being everything a, else. Oh yeah. And that's, and that's where it's so, it's so critical to like be learning and like really kind of digging into every aspect of the business, not just, you know, what single origin coffee you're going to get or, you know, which like milk supplier you're going to use or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and that kind of leads into the the next and last thing here that uh, you mentioned. And number five is, for you know, before you launch, you need to learn that business stuff that you don't know, like the accounting, legal structures, um, regulatory systems, and taxes. Um, you're you're on that journey now, I imagine. Still, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, without hopefully incriminating myself, I recently, in discussions with my accountant, found out that. I had not been paying a specific tax that I was supposed to be paying. Uh, so I had to, I had to write a fairly large check to our local government because of that. And so it's things like that. It's like, there's so many details that go into it, whether it's, you know, liability insurance for your business or workers comp or, you know, how do you set up your structure? So like we have a couple of friends and family that gave us some money to help kind of get the doors open and how do I, you know, how do I give them equity and all those kind of like legal things Mm. are all like, those are all things you have to think about before you get the doors open. Because as I'm learning in this stage coming up to the end, like once you get the doors open, you have a whole other set of things to think about. You can't, you can't be worrying about whether or not your accounting is right or whether or not your LLC is set up the way it's supposed to be. You're going to be worrying about, do I have, you know, am I serving customers? Am I creating a great guest experience? All those things. Well, thank you so much, Tim, for joining us on this uh, Shift Break episode. How can people stay in touch with your progress? How can people um, get in contact with you and and what you're doing with liturgy? Um, yeah, so we are Liturgy Beverage, L-I-T-U-R-G-Y Beverage on all the social media platforms. Um, I'm on all the social media platforms as Tim M. Jones, my middle initials M, so T-I-M-M Jones. Um, you can also reach out to me, Tim at liturgybeverage.com, and I'm always happy to like, you know, commiserate with other people in this kind of f- space or learn from People who are further ahead of me, some some of the guys who have opened shops in the last couple of years, I've reached out to, and just they've been super helpful, answering questions and just really, you know, providing information. I think that's been the biggest thing has been just learning that info. So, 
Sweet. Thanks so much, Tim, for joining us. Um, uh, look forward to seeing that shop in action and uh, coming out and getting some coffee from you. And uh, everyone, thank you for joining us on the show. I hope that this has been uh, a really instructive time for you. This was uh, certainly some valuable information that Tim has shared. And we'll see you here next week on another episode of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.